Welcome back to you, Cypher Naya Sport Night Superstars. This last game can change the entire dynamics of the league and the match today. We have Defense of the Ancient 2 up next. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to you, Cypher Season 1. My name is Vivek, with me is CloudX, and you're watching the Marksman take on the Yakshas. The marksmen, they fought hard and they played well earlier on today in the game of Counter-Strike. But they ended up losing 16-14 if I'm not mistaken. And the points that separate these two sides at the moment is mainly 6. If the Yaktas manage to win the game of Dota, they'll be at 60 while the marksmen will remain at 61. Is the this is ban. the top of the table. Things are getting serious. This is round robin number 2. And the action is just getting started, CloudX. The last time they faced off, Marksman took the victory. But Marksman, they've been proven to have a chink in their armor. We've seen the teams like the exploit this chink in the past. Let's see if Yakshas has what it takes as well. You know that Yakshas has sort of found their stride with this Medusa undying <laughs> ladder that they've got going for themselves. Yeah. But uh, there's the undying ban coming out from Marksman. There's three bans apiece in the first phase. And I honestly wouldn't be surprised if the Medusa just gets banned. Here's out of the Radiant ban. In his first pick going over towards the Marksman on the Radiant side. So it's likely that Yakshas will be the one banning out the Medusa, if at all. Mm -hmm. But uh, I um, want to see if Marksman chooses to go with their tried and tested Earthshaker first pick again. Do you think Marksman pick it up? I mean, the Night Stalker is still in the mix as well, and I, I really don't see incentive to not make him up with the option. Okay. Uh, the Undying has been banned out, like you mentioned. Five it's, uh, seconds remaining. The ran to great effect earlier on. Mm -hmm. They ran a solid try lane uh, with the Undying, the Crystal Maiden, and uh, the Medusa, and they had reasonable success in the lanes. Taking down Tier 1 Towers really early on, but still having to force the game to go late, and that's when they had the security in the form of the Medusa. I remember Akrid just giving up his keyboard and mouse and uh, letting Medusa bang away on the throne while he was screaming jointly. Uh, Wiper Visage getting banned. Uh, Wiper still a huge nuisance to deal with, and people don't want to take yeah. uh, any chances. Oh, the oh, Dire oh, get a ban. Radiant's to turn to pick. That they're not afraid to run Drow Rangers. Dire's to turn to pick. Well Night Stalker. It's going to be the Night Stalker. It's something they're going to favor over the Earthshaker in this particular matchup. Yakshas might consider getting themselves the Earthshaker for themselves. They have the option of picking that or going in for the Medusa lineup right now itself. Um, I'll tell you one thing. We did talk about uh, how ease seconds. of execution seems to be the biggest factor here. The format of the U Cypher League, it's Five a bunch of highly remaining. skilled players that have been drafted into separate teams. Traditional esports has teams that have been practicing together for a long time. Unfortunately, these players have been put to the real test by having to gel with people that some, some of which they've never met in their lives before. Yep. You cannot afford to run uh, complex strategies yep. like... Uh, I don't know, rupture hoax, or maybe even things like your uh, straight up push strategies and uh, Silencer. that require immense amount of coordination. In Radiant's turn easy to takes, pick. Silencer, the one button hero, as we like to call him. The global silence, always available when you need it. The clockwork, pretty standard initiation. Decent four position, decent off laner as well. Yakshas is just sticking, sticking to that philosophy of picking easy to execute drafts. Mm -hmm. Marksmen are going to go with uh, the Night Stalker, as we pointed out earlier. Now, do they want to supplement this with a Spectre? Because we know that those two heroes do have some Five when seconds it comes remaining. To the reduction in uh, the mid and late game stages. So, they could do Spectre. Uh, uh, I presume this is when they'll be looking for their 5 position. Itachi God is their 4 position player, so I presume he's going to be playing the Night Stalker. That means they're looking for a 5 position for Pashu. He plays the Disruptor, he plays a bunch of heroes. What's really good versus the Silencer though? I mean, I don't know if it's the best idea to think of your 5 position based on the Silencer on the other side. Okay. You possibly just think of how, you could, how you're going to deal with the Clockwork and his rotations early on. Okay. Um, to that effect, I do like the Disruptor. Um, hook shot in, glimpse him back out. That's one really easy way to secure yourself. Dyer's ban now. But they'll go with the Jakiro. Tried and tested push comes out with the Jakiro as their five. Mm -hmm. Both teams just picking up what looked like supports in their first phase, not revealing their hands in terms of cores. We've still got that dirty Medusa in the mix and we've got another set Ten of hands. Seconds. Perhaps we're going to see it banned out here. Five seconds remaining. I mean, the talk around uh, the venue has been that Doom is one of those heroes that does well versus the Medusa. I'm not entirely sold on that. Uh, 
I think muting the Medusa is not going to reduce her efficacy in team fights. She's still that meat shield. I, if I'm not mistaken, the mute effect only applies when. Uh, uh, Radiance oh, sorry, the mute effect applies back. regardless. But what am I missing? There's something that the Aghanim sector does to you. Dyer's bad now. The Aghanim's update on the Doom. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, my. But the Medusa has been banned out here by the marksman, and I couldn't be happier because Medusa is as easy as it gets to execute because most of these teams are having a rough time ending the game in that mid-game stage. More Ten often than not, seconds. we see the team with the early and mid-game lead falling behind in the late game and eventually losing out. Five it happened seconds with the Rodas remaining. where they took a win with that Medusa tombstone push, Medusa and Undying tombstone push. It's happened with uh, Yakshas as well. Uh, sorry, yeah, Yakshas as well actually yeah. where Akrit came in from behind with the Medusa. The only team that's had a loss uh, with the Medusa is the Marksman. If I'm not mistaken, they ran Drow and Medusa and they couldn't end. Yeah. Uh, they really struggled to end the game. I mean, that was Medusa augmented and by that the Drow. And that too required like multiple Divine Rapiers and Multiple such. Divine Rapiers. On the side of a Weaver at that. Speaking of, the Weaver's in the mix. Radiance uh, turn to ban. Don't really have... Dyer's turn to The Night Shocker is good up until the Weaver gets himself that to Lincoln's. But hold the phone, everybody. Why the hell is Marksman banned out the Meepo? Is there something about the Yakshas that we're Radiance not aware of that they like pick. running the Meepo? I, do you know if any Meepo players in the mix? I'm wondering, I sure I mean, don't. does Appa play the Meepo? I don't know. Appa is the mid laner. As far as I know, he doesn't play the Meepo. But they're going to go back to the Spectre. It's Akrid who's going to be playing the Spectre. Seconds. You've got Global Silence as well as the Spectre Haunt. Uh, some global five seconds from remaining. The and what I like more about the silencer pickup is that marksmen do like uh, offlaners that are a strong source of initiation. They want a way to deal with red when he starts to become a nuisance in these team fights, and they've got the global silencer back them up. Uh, VP's been phenomenal on the clockwork throughout the tournament. He had a rough Dyer's turn to, to pay. Getting used and to the lights, the camera, and all of that, but he's found his groove, and I'm looking for him to have. Um, Strong impact in these team fights for the clockwork. The marksmen, though, they're not hesitating. They're going to reveal their one position as well. It's going to be the Sven. Huh, I, I think they could have held on to that pick. I Ten sure think seconds. they could have held on as well because it's unlikely that the Sven would have been banned. He's not the most intuitive Five seconds remaining. In the, the way Sven works is the Warcry gives you the bonus armor and movement speed, sure, but Spectre's Desolate only kicks in if you're isolated in the jungle. And even if the Sven gets caught isolated and the Spectre jumps in upon him with that Desolate, yeah. it's going to ignore all of his armor. Radiant's to turn to pick. Early on, but I like what Yakshas are doing. They're going to get themselves that meat shield on the front lines and a source of reliable initiation in this Centaur War Honor. Now they've got two fairly tanky cores coming out, the Spectre and the Centaur. Their supports, one's fairly defensive, one's super aggressive. Ten seconds. I'd like to see them pick up uh, their middle laner who's a tempo controller. Five seconds remaining. It's very easy to walk into this uh, draft being completely greedy and then being punished for it. Because let's face it, the Sven at the moment is the fastest farmer on the map. And if you end up giving away too much time to the... Uh, if you end up giving away too much time to the... Uh, Sven to farm, he's gonna come back and beat you up in the face. The Dyer get a ban. Uh, he hold the horn of madness. With, um, a really high win rate in this patch of late has been the center. I mean, he's been rocking the win rate charts over there uh, along with the Beastmaster and the Akshas. I, I think they've been studying this patch rather thoroughly here, uh, which probably explains the, uh, the center. Marksmen, they're gonna just buff up that Sven a little bit themselves. They Five got seconds remaining. Strong team fight with the RP. You've got Cleave already coming up from the Sven and the Empower on top. Here's the Radiant like fan. The question is... Radiant's turn I mean, to you pick. said this before, it's just like a chicken waiting to be fattened up and <laughs> just to be saved for a good rainy day and all that network swings right back towards the Yakshas. However, they do have that Magnus-Sven duo going for themselves, so that bit of wombo combo potential does exist with the Sven cleaving through a bunch of targets caught in the RP. Problem with that is... Ten um, seconds. The Empower on top of the Sven's Great Cleave is a bit of an overkill if you Five ask Five seconds really remaining. Additional cleave, to be honest. But the damage is always nice. You think we're going to see a mid ember spirit? For Marksman? It's something that I wouldn't put past them, honestly. It's good control versus the Spectre. It's a decent way to escape from the Spectre as well with the Remnant jump away. It's... It's a, it's a mobile hero who builds Yules who can probably jump onto the Silencer. That's one way of looking at it. It's, it's somebody who benefits from the cleave. Does... I mean, the Queen of Pain is in the mix, and that's still a viable option. 
Hmm. Although you might be the first to turn to be. Oh, my the Necro Force is going to get picked up. Completely forgot about him. Yeah. He's, uh, while he did get a few direct nerfs, there is an indirect buff that went over yeah. this hero. You can no longer purge off the Ghost Shroud with a Diffusal Blade. Mm -hmm. And that means that one of the Spectre's bread and butter items may not be as effective as you would have liked. How does Yakshas approach this? You they don't have burst them down in the five shot. seconds Problem remaining. Is they don't have too much magic damage on the side of Yakshas right now. This is a really smart pick coming out from Marksman. Mm. What do you like to see? Core mid mid Pagna. Yeah, Pagna is not half bad for Yakshas. Even even if you want to pick up a Zeus, it's a little yeah. unconventional. But I think the I, Zeus could I work. I don't here. mind the Zeus mid Zeus. Burst him through the Ghost Shroud, do a fair bit of damage there. Has that synergy with the Spectre as well. It's super risky because then they're going to have almost nothing to break buildings. I, I like the mid Pagna more. Yeah. But I, I think... Pagna, oh, what? Choose your Why hero! Why is so shocking? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's, it's a mid Pagna indeed. He's going to have a field day versus the Necroforce to some extent. The nether ward is going to be great. The problem is that early on, the Night Stalker is going to be diving in. So they've got to respect that. And TPs I, need to be no, at the ready. I want to backtrack for a moment. Why were you so shocked? You basically called it and then you were shocked when they actually picked it. That doesn't make sense. I, it, it's I, the, it, it seems like the obvious pick here for Yakshas. Okay. Were you not confident about your call out yourself? I didn't expect my call to be considered <laughs> as a possible pick. I was just... Um, I was just wondering to myself what I would draft if I were in that scenario. Vivek is moving up in the drafting world, but we're <laughs> going to get this game underway, Yakshas. But, but are you, do you like the mid Pagna? I like the mid Pagna, but it's a desperation pick because it's clearly just a response for that uh, Zark Necroforce that was thrown at them at the last pick. But they got some push now. They do. The Nether War's going to do well. Sven pops God Strength, his blink disabled. Yeah. Have we provided the Nether Unless he BKBs there? first. Yeah. So Sven's got to just press his buttons in the right order. Essentially, yeah. Or he's just going to have to watch for the buff on himself. Mm -hmm. If the uh, debuff yeah. is there from the nether world, then he probably just considers not initiating at all. They don't really have a way to speak around and uh, make that war, right? They're not like they have a way to at the uh, nether world as well. So, yeah, I, I feel like this is a really good game for the Pugna. Not just because of I mean, his the efficacy. Nice it's not just because of his efficacy versus the Necroforce, it's also the synergy versus that uh, Sven. The Decrepify makes you resistant to physical damage. It's essentially your own Ghost Shroud. Yeah, versus and that can't be dispelled team. either. <clears throat> I feel like this is a draft that could go either way. I don't think it's going to be one of those 80-minute slugfests that happens when the Medusa enters the battlefield, but it does have the makings of going to the 60-minute mark. More so because Spectre is one of those heroes that can be devastating in the ultra late game stage with that Radiance Burn. But do you, do you think that with the introduction of the new patch and where the creeps meet uh, in the respective safety, this the game office, is on. Do you think it's better to run a hard conventional tri lane early on and apply as much pressure on the enemy off laner just to start with, and then maybe once you hit the night time, maybe the four minute mark, that's when you start looking for kills. Yeah, I mean, I think the basic tenets of the game still remain in place that you want to ensure that... I mean, that no, mid was earlier a 2v2. Do you think we still need to run 2v2s or mid do you think... Mid was sort of a 2v2. I mean, it wasn't a hard and fast rule that you run 2 at mid. Yeah, but... If you had something in the late show, you know, it's a lot more advantageous to send him mid because he's not going to add too much value down south. But in this particular game, Night Stalker is most likely going to be running around the map. Jakiro at the middle lane doesn't make much sense to me. By himself, I think he's fine at zoning out Kalnayak. I mean, what I'm saying is, uh, as as a four position and a five position, you've got to win one lane. You've got to win one lane for sure. The easiest lane to win is your safe lane, because of where the creeps mid. You've got to guarantee that at the very least. So, I, I want to see supports win one lane. That's, that's what they got to do. I mean, you're working with the numbers that wanted somewhere. Might as well ensure that you win that lane. It makes sense. I or instead of just running around in every lane, throwing a void, that's quite pointless actually, in my opinion. You're just posing consumables. But is he really going to be able to win a lane by himself at the south side? Because I mean, a void versus the center. Okay. It does very little at this point. VP. Got the battery is all he needs to be careful. Mage is coming in. That's that void we spoke of. Mage. He's put the point into Stormhammer, but they're not going to chase early on. 
Uh, Appa is going to be playing uh, the Pagna. He's got two tangos ferried over to him. He's got the TP coming up full down. He's going to pick up the boundary rune and uh, TP back to the mid lane. And we're clear Darkly for up. running. He's going to pull off the old uh, switch. Clear for running. He's going to be sitting back towards his tier 2 to get the block off. Looks like Coach in the middle lane is going to be doing exactly that. Yeah, everybody's caught up with the patch. Oh no, Appa. He missed his block in the middle lane. Well, Zark's gonna get it off. This is gonna work out beautifully for the Necrophos. You've now. also sort of got to be careful as to where you TP to. You can't TP too much to either side, and I think that could affect your block. Yeah. Well, this puts the creep wave on Zark's slope and gives Appa that uh, low ground disadvantage with the missed chance <laughs> coming in, but he's gonna deny that range creep. No. But Zark will return the favor, and lane once again meets at the mid river. Bottom though, that boy does come out and start to bring it on Kalnai the storm ammo was there, he still has the hoof stomp, but VP's here as well, he gets the hoof stomp off, runs to the west side, they're still giving chase. VP, what are you doing man, how does a clockwork even do a pull off a three man body block? I mean, he did manage to pull it off, but Pashu with the dual red got the kill, he even throws out the taunt for good measure. The first blood over to the marksman, they're off to a solid start here, but... Enters back with a fair amount of HP to work with. He started with the Quelling Blade, so he's looking to farm, not fight. But BP, uh-oh, he's isolated out in a bad position. Yeah, he's got the Battery Assault. He's going in the Void upon him. He's not got the cogs. The Battery Assault is wearing off. Blade throws him with the Storm Hammer. Look for the stop. He's holding on to it. Lands it upon to VP trying to run. Itachi got. Does he have another Void? He did, but then not feel comfortable chasing all the way behind that tier one. This H is what I mean. Do you, do you think VP would be better off spending his time trying to apply pressure on the Magnus? At this point, I definitely think so. Either, I mean, either on the Magnus or even, even on the uh, Dark Necropus for that matter. Because mm -hmm. honestly, with Appa and the Clockwork, the cogs into the Nether Blast, it could do a fair bit of damage on Zark. It might even be enough to kill him while he doesn't have the Ghost Shot to run away from it. And there's, it's not like there's a ward on the middle lane either. Neither yes. of the middle laners have got a ward on their slope, which is super unconventional in this day and age. Yeah, this is going to hurt the Pugna in two minutes' time. It's going to be night time. The night stuff is going to be on the prowl. And hopefully, the clockwork and the silence have TPs at the ready. You mentioned how VP could have some impact in the middle lane, and he's going to do just that. He's looping around. Dark, and Zark, without the ward, half. might have gone into deep. Appa does have the blast. Look, just one blast is what he's got. Appa with the blast. I mean, got 1.7 mana region, but it's still not enough. Zark got the dead pulse, the heart stoppers, but DP comes in, the battle is all in there. Along with the Cog Zappa, he's got the dead pulse, it's gonna be enough. Zark pushed back by the Cog Zappa, got the blast, gets the kill, gets the kill. Secure the kill onto the clockwork, excuse me, onto the necropose. And Itachi got only TPs in to soak up some EXP. So, that bottle flew out for Appa midway through the fight, which allowed him to get enough, enough mana for the Nether Blast as well as the Decrepify. All of that was only possible because he was holding on to the Arcane Rune. Yeah. That reduced the mana cost of his spells. Meanwhile, up top, Acrid, yeah. throwing it in red, but I don't think this should be a kill. Red does have a skewer if he wants to get away from this. One for one so far, both sides finding a kill. Mage uh, sitting fairly comfortable on the bottom. Nat might just find a solo kill here. Full stun double edge. Um, didn't get uh, too concerned that he didn't have vision of the Jokiro. Just estimated as to where he would be in the streets and landed that perfect full stun. Well done by Kalnag there. I mean, just as I was about to call out uh, Mage for having a comfortable time on this bottom lane, it, it's Kalnayak just puts a stop to it with a solo yeah. kill on the Jakiro. That's not what you want to be giving up to uh, your off laner here. I mean, Kalnayak is going to be super happy with that. He's gotten way more than he bargained for. Mm -hmm. He's also standing on the front lines and just soaking PHP and farming in their face. It Mage is going to be night time though. I, I don't think these two can kill him by themselves, especially with the Clockwork hanging in the vicinity. Clockwork, I'm going to pick up both bounty rooms. Yeah, that's one of the advantages of clockwork as well. The cog one of the better skills at uh, securing those bounties, just forming a perimeter around the tree. Mm -hmm. Nighttime. from coming in. Itachi God. Where does he choose to move towards? Mid's in a bit of a pickle here because Appa is sitting at uh, level 5 and he had that Invis rune as well. He's just zoning out Zark quite efficiently here. I think Zark is called for a gang. VP is nearby. Um, they don't have vision of where the Nightstalk and the Jakiro are, but they're missing on the map and they should know that something's wrong. Oh, the Rocket Flare. Perfect Rocket Flare. 
Good stuff from VP. He saves Appa's life with that rocket flare vision. And even though he doesn't personally move into the lane himself, he's done enough. Yeah. Um, they do have vision of red though. No, excuse me, that's a radiant that's observer. That's a board. Red's just trying to stack, but VP's gonna have none of that. <laughs> just casually waltzes past the camp. Mid lane though. I thought this time I'd be in a bit of trouble if that card goes in. They've got the silence upon the bug now. He's not level 6. There's no way he survives. He no, no, leaves the lane. Again. And the marksmen team feast. up and bring down the Pagna there. Meanwhile, Red, he spotted out VP coming up top as well. So they're not going to find any sort of return kills there either. Bottom lane, Kalnaya, he's got a creep wave under his tower, but May just sort of hit this groove where he just pushes out the wave as much as he can and then goes into the jungle if he needs to farm some extra creep. Kalnaya, every time he approaches the wave, he gets smacked with the friend's cleave and that doesn't really proc the return damage. So. This is not the ideal matchup for Kalnaik, but here comes Itachi. They God. just put three points into the top hammer. This could be a kill. They hurt the center a lot with all that magic and damage. They got the silence. They're chasing down the center, but Itachi God didn't have mana. They want to give chase. Meanwhile, Meanwhile mid, lane. mid lane, they've caught Zark in the dog with the life drain. Red comes in, skewers them back. Zark could turn around, but he doesn't have the Reaper's sight. There's no way he finds a kill. And the rocket flag gives them vision enough to retreat. Actually, Appa's going in. A little odd that Zark hasn't hit six yet because he was up, he was at five and a half when they got that kill in the river. On uh, can't seem to remember. I think it was the clockwork, or was it the Pugna himself? Yeah, yeah they the cut Pugna. the Pugna once. It, it was a rotation from the night stock and the Jupiter. Considering that Pugna has crossed the level six mark, Nectarpus is falling behind. This could start to hurt him a little bit. Denied. That life train did allow the Pugna to assert his dominance for the first couple of minutes now. Mm -hmm. Let's see if uh, they can score a, a Reaper's Scythe kill right at the bat with the Jakiro hanging around here. No ice path on the Jakiro though, so there's no lockdown to hold him in position to get that damage dished out. Yeah. Level 3 Jakiro, it's gonna help, but I'm not sure it's gonna be enough to bring down Appa. And VP's even hanging nearby. VP. How's his uh, progress going? Progress towards uh, uh, mid lane. They're trying to find this kill on Appa desperately. Kalnayak has been zoned out now on the bottom lane. He is sitting at about 18 CS. He's up to level 5.5 though. While he has been zoned out in terms of uh, last hit, he's getting a fair bit of EXP. But the same case can be made for the Magnus as well. Red is not having a ball of a time either. That level 5.5 and, and has a little less CS than the Centaur himself. And Centaur, let's not forget, he even got that solo kill once. Yeah. Centaur is leading the round 3 of the network. Uh, Appa insisted on taking down this mid lane tower. I mean, Zuck can no more deal with the Pagna. He needs Pasha to be nearby at all times. Uh, life is hard for the Necroforce in the mid lane, and it's going to take another rotation, but nighttime is wearing off a couple of seconds until it's day once more. And Itachi got just gets the feeling that he hasn't done enough with his nighttime. Yeah, his job now is to just stack up for the Sven and ensure that he gets that burst of net worth somewhere down, somewhere down the line. Sven should be angling towards the Master Bandit. Yeah, that's what he's going for. This is the uh, Morbid Mask left, left to be picked up. Kalnayak though, no hesitation. It's almost as if he knows exactly where Sven's supports are as he goes in here on Mage. Mm -hmm. Appa needs to be careful though. Tachiga just picked up an Invis rune and he is tailing the Pugna. Does he have backup though? Pashu is not enough to score this He's kill. He's got infused raindrops. Maybe with the Jakiro or Nami. The Necrophos has to make the play though. But listen, there's Appa just running away thanks to the Stampede. Goes back in, drops the Nether Blast, gets the kill on Itachi God. And Acrid is here as well with the Haunt. Pashu, he's going to TP out, but Zark caught in the cogs. No way for him to escape. But can the rest of the Yakshas catch up? Decrypt, oh, blast Appa. the blast off the mark. But they get the Night Stalker, they foil the gank, a well-timed stampede, making all the difference there. Kalnayak keeping tabs on the map. But this is where there's a small kill opportunity coming out for the side of Marksman as well. They picked up Red. Uh, well, Red's picked up the level 6 and no, the RP is no. now available. BP is looping in from behind. Red's going to call drop. He's silent. <laughs> Red just threw a straight pass and over them. Now this could be trouble for Itachi. God, Red has that RP. Does he want to commit it under the tower here with Akrid giving chase? I think Akrid is okay to dive like this. He should have a point in dispersion. Akrid is okay, but Zark is not. I mean, Zark, he's oh, lost they, they a lot. smoked under a dire observer ward right now. Yeah. VP did uh, go there to steal the observer and drop that observer. Uh, did go there to steal the bounty rune and uh, started out uh, 
Let's smoke with that observer which he dropped early on. VP is not six just yet. Funk is five. But yeah, VP is gonna break the smoke. And even if he dies, he's absolutely okay. Appa is nowhere close to VP. And yeah, the early game just not going in favor of the marksman. Zark has a little bit of mana to go for that. Zark has 17 stick charges. Zark is getting desperate. They're getting desperate in this mid lane. This is one of the most convincing wins I've seen in the mid lane That's so that. far in the youth cypher league. Dyer's bottom tower I mean, is about to flounder. He's got himself two kills, just the one death. The one death happened when three heroes rotated upon him in the night time. Yeah. Punk and is just desperately trying to get his level 6 online now before they fight once again. Fine. And Red, he's got that RP but no blink tag on his couple of rough plays. This could take a while before we see impactful plays being made by him. They have a lot of synergy in the mid game. I like the Jokiro Magnus duo, I like the uh, Sven being thrown into the mix as well, but Has it's Sven a lineup that's going to need a bit more time to come online. Sven got stacks though, the question. Look at it. Sven got stacks though, the question. Look at it. Sven got stacks though, the question. Look at it. Sven got stacks though, the question. Look at it. Sven got stacks though, the question. Look at it. Sven got stacks though, the question. Look at it. Sven got stacks though, the question. Look at it. Sven got stacks though, the question. Look at it. Sven got stacks though, the question. Look at it. Sven got stacks though, the question. Look at it. Sven got stacks though, the question. Look at it. Sven got it's actually a net player that is enough to down. Even attack. with a Vanguard finished up on him. <laughs> Axel doesn't care, he has no fear at all. Yeah, he's got enough HP regen, he's got mobility coming out with the uh, phase boots and his relic, I don't see it as being too far off if the game continues like this. Do you think he goes for the relic or... Mantis time, no? Just for um, the crippling fear or relic is I think a lot more right. impactful. If you can get the early radiance online, you might as well. Yeah. I think a thousand Dyer's more. middle tower having is up in drowning. Uh, by so the 20 minute mark. Manta's a bit of a catch 22 this game because it's great versus the crippling fear, but not so good versus the Sven and the cleave damage. Mm -hmm. so you probably want to go for the radiance, just go for the safe build with the radiance and then go forward. But of course, if they start ganking him and applying a lot more pressure upon him, then you switch gears and just go for the Manta instead. So, I mean, if you take a look at everyone on the side uh, of the Yorkshire, they've done incredibly well for themselves. Actually, they've done for themselves. The partner has done pretty well in the mid lane. He's taken down the tier one. He's got his guy up and going. Yeah. has a hood. Tower is Red under is sitting on Arcane boots. What have the supports done so horribly wrong <laughs> that the only lane they managed to win was the one with Sven in it? Anyway, we we'll get back to that later as Appa is starting on the red spot when the Arcane goes immediate hook shot. Life drain, global silence and the horn for good measure. They're moving on to the Necroforce. The stampede is there. There's no way Zark gets out and Punk is screaming with joy once more. Beautifully that, done by the Yaksha. Such easy execution. We talked about ease of execution being the key to victory in the USI for League. And Yakshas have spared no real expense to get that. Spectre, a one-button hero. Global Silence, a one-button hero. All you're really looking forward to is good initiations from BP and Kalnaik and they have been playing on point so far. Fantastic stuff coming up from the Yakshas. They'll take a victory, they'll take a team fight, but they will not take a tier 1 tower after it. Mostly because the Pugna is nowhere in the vicinity. Yeah, Pugna just went back mid to make life difficult uh, for the Sven. But yeah, I, th I think he could rejoin his team if he Dyer's needs to. Bottom tower the won't last thing long. is, the Axis to some extent are just comfortable taking this late. Um, they're, they're okay with uh, having to deal with the Sven later on in the game. They've got a Sven. They've got means to control the Sven, like the Sven and the Pugna. Dyer's well. Bottom like, Tower is, is about to flounder. Anything, the Marksmen need to slow down this game, catch up on the Necroforce badly. Get that Sven in fighting shape. Get a blink dagger on the Magnus. The, the real chink in the uh, Yaksha's armor is their cooldowns. When the Haunt and the Global are on cooldown like this, Marksman, you, you gotta smoke, you gotta make something happen right away. They're doing nothing. They're just farming, Cedrus, Paribus, and Spectre's happy to be in this situation. I mean, look at Akrid. He's, nobody's even bothering to contest him as he's farming towards his Radiance on the top lane. He's getting assist gold, occasional kill gold, and the entirety of a marksman, they're just they're putting their eggs into the Sven basket, basket saying that okay, your Spectre will farm, so will us Sven. Yeah, main, main has, uh, but the Master Madness as well as the Sanj and Yasha. Such, yeah. I mean, these are items that pale in comparison to a Radiance on the spec, especially if it comes out in the next they're trying to bring down Radiance top tower. But one RP, man, there is potential yeah. for Sven to do a lot of that. It's gonna take a major mistake on the part of uh, the Yakshas, but. If they do make that mistake and if They're Magnus can punish it, they'll find down. themselves in a. I mean, Marksman finds himself in a 
Of the global challenge is there. Has mage popped the gods and yes, he has, and he's pounding away on VP. But here comes Appa to the rescue with the decrypt, with the life train, life train, life train, life train. More than enough to deal with the Sven, and the Nether Blast secures the kill. Beautifully done by the Yakshas, keeping in, committing the global, and bringing down the Sven. Without that, losing anyone in response. That Sven looked like a headless chicken man, just running around while the rest of Yaksha just made him look like a fool. That, that, that was pretty well coordinated, I have to say. Keeping the clockwork there on the side, jumping in with the hook shot, cogging him in and then running out from the trees while Appa life drains him through and through. It's also good week coming out from the line. He knows that they want to watch him. Senses that they're going to contest the one. As soon as the dual red comes out, he just pops the stand lead and goes in while VP followed up with the decent middle shot. tower. And, is uh, under uh, pressure. Now, Marksman, they're trying to find a desperate trade. This isn't really a trade, but the problem is that the Yakshas don't have the clip and they might have to give up this tower. But they have a haunt and they're going to have a hook shot in the next four seconds. I'm pretty certain they're going to look to go in here and just stick around. Zark. He stayed a bit too long. VP. Yeah, VP could go in. He's gonna go in, I think. Nah, he's missed his opportunity. Yeah, I, I think that could have been a confirmed kill on Zap. Uh, never mind, he has a four star. Mid is the storm hammer there. The Vanguard man pickles and did pop. Yeah, he popped the haunt as well. See, this is what they should have been doing earlier as well. Use that RP to secure a kill on the Spectre. Dyer's Spectre's down for a decent amount of time now. And uh, the Radiance Save has essentially been delayed. Time. Finally, they're going to be able to transition it into a tower. Mage, he's, he's definitely Dyer's got the potential to do massive amounts of damage gone. right now. And with Red having that Blink Dagger online, life gets significantly easier for Marksman. Yeah. Every 80 seconds, they've just got to keep taking fights and exploit the cooldowns on the Haunt as well as that uh, Global Silence. Yeah, I mean, that was the first time, uh, or probably the second time that um, the marksman looked for a fight and uh, with the RP, they managed to pick a Fuji kill on the Spectre. Uh, the Necroforce is starting to catch up. He's got the four stuff, like you mentioned. That's going to allow him to stay alive with the clockwork and just allow him to stay away from the center. Appa's chosen to pick up a Blink Dagger on his Pogna, so more mobility versus that spell. Always a good tool to have in your arsenal. But... It's getting to a point where their lineup is going to start lacking physical DPS because the Spectre isn't really the best source of physical DPS on a single target. The way Spectre works as a core is you pop the haunt and multiple heroes across the map take a whole lot of damage and the team fight gets spun into a state of controlled chaos if you've got the Spectre on your side. There's not too many ways to capitalize on that chaos. Pugna, really not the ideal hero to go hunting in the middle in the thick of battle. Silencer, he's only a real, he's actually a support. He's meant to be supportive towards the role of the cores, but you, you, you don't have something like a Templar Assassin that does damage on the front lines. You don't have something like an OD that drops a hammer in the middle of the fray. I, I'm not sure what a mid Pugna is expected to do when the Spectre pops that haunt. Mm -hmm. And I think Marksmen have recognized this as well. They know Come that they've got a physical DPS advantage at the moment. And you can see them sort of grouping up. They're just creating space and time for the Sven to finish this PKB. And it's going to come out before the Spectre gets did, I think they committed a global silence for Jakiro. But they pretty much ensured that there was no follow-up coming out from the Marksmen. Nicely done. Uh, Kalai going in uh, with the Blink Dagger, Pugna unveiling his and securing a kill on the Jokiro with the Decrypt and the Blast. So, with the Jokiro respawning in 10 seconds, they're going to have about a 20 second window without the Spectre Haunt and a massive 100 second window without that Global Sign. Yeah. They should be fighting again because the RP is back on. They've online. done just that. They're smoked up and they're moving towards the Spectre. But Acrid somewhat reads the map and uh, somewhat wants to just play it safe because he's picked up his Relic now. Akira does have the horn coming off cooldown in 15 seconds. If Kalnak and VP can look for an opening here, this could be huge for the Yakshas. But they're not finding anyone. Nightstalker is um, running in an opposite direction. Akira's TP to his shrine. This is dodgy and sketchy at best. The Observer Ward is going to catch out right. The Dyer know pretty much where the marksmen are. Look for the hookshot coming up from VP. He's nice. He's going to send a couple of illusions first, yeah, and it's going to catch out mage. The other issue with the lineup on the side of Yakshas is that they don't have a way to take Roshan. I mean, I don't think they can take Roshan throughout this entire game, actually. Oh, Unless yeah. the Spectre picks up something like a heart in addition to all that uh, damage she's packing. Maybe sent off. 
no. They don't have enough damage. They don't have enough single target physical damage coming on. Yeah. Whereas on the other side, Sven pops a god strength, runs in, you heal up with the Necro next to you and Roshan drops. I also like how the Nike is itemizing. He's going for the Halberd. It's going to be nice for Super Sven. And um, yeah, I mean, we're slowly hitting that point where the Necro force has to start carrying his own weight in this team fight. Get to see a single Reaper side, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the Dyer's the middle tower the is under side. attack. I feel like they've not done enough on the side of Yakshas either. They, while they have this Bounce, sort of late game power spike with that Spectre, they should have been looking for more kills with this Kalnaev Centaur. There we go! But this jumps up on Pashu, they'll eliminate him, actually commits the haunt. He's moving forward. Who does he choose to go up on? No one just yet. Look for the initiative to go up on Kalnaev, but it's gonna be hard without the Stampede. Mage popped the God Strength though, and now they're gonna smoke and go on the return kill once again. It was just a Jakiro that died for a haunt. Again. Yes. Not, not ideal, but they got the Global Silence. The Netherfall is nearby. They're going to find Kanaya. Where's the fall of the Global Silence? Well, Punk isn't committing it because Appa doesn't want to fight. And Akrid got gotten out of there as well. And they get the ward for good measure, so. No haunt, pop a smoke, pop a god strength, get a kill on Kalnayak's center and don't even commit an RP for it. Yeah, Red still has RP. They could go once more if they have a smoke available. They should actually, because they know that the haunt is down for a long time. The Spectre, however, is going to have the Radiance with that next haunt coming online. I'll take that. Yeah, this is going to start getting Dyer's difficult for the side of Marksman. Yeah. Oh, attack. sorry, for the side of, yeah, for the side of Marksman. Anyway, the Marksman is going to start looping up and pushing. Uh, okay, not much of a group up and push. Instead, they're just shooting towards the top half of the map. Although the movements in the early game seem a bit lackluster, they're starting to find their groove. And once again at the 20 minute mark, the scoreboard means nothing. The network deficit means nothing. In fact, there's no network deficit at all. It's yeah. purely going to boil down to execution in these team fights. You spoke about ease of execution being a factor. And it's going to somewhat boil down to who has a better draft at the end of it all. Mage and Red are moving with purpose across this map. Yeah. But uh, this observer ward is providing some very valuable intel for the side of Yakshas. But they're pushing out, there's no better way to put it. They're just sticking back right now, not able to take a fight, not willing to take a fight till the haunt and the global silence are online. I mean, that's okay, right? Do you, do you want to take a fight? You probably don't, but, but you want to you're giving Roshan. up a free Roshan now, exactly. There's the clockwork rocket flare coming Shit. towards the pit. They have no idea this is going on. They have no idea at all. They're not keeping towards the shrine. There's a double damage rune. This this is costly for the archer. Very costly. It's, it's got a really low cooldown. 60 seconds to be honest. That's not much at all. Especially when you're facing off versus 100 second plus cooldown on the global and that Spectre haunt. Um, Pashu, he's not really progressing in terms of items, but as a five position, he has queued up that four star next. The most crucial item versus the clockwork, and I can't really fault him for having it queued up. I'd like to see Ghost Scepters coming out this game on the side of uh, Marksman. But at the same time, I also want to see a fight coming out on one of their cores. Possibly the Night Stalker or the Necroforce, who should be going for it. Giving up their tier 2? I mean, they're hoping That's a DD Sven. You're not trading quickly. But now they've got the Haunt, they've got the Aegis on the other side, however. And the God Strength is going to come back online in just 10 attack. seconds. They're ready to go high ground. All five just Dyer's moving towards top the top lane here. They even popped the smoke the preemptively to help Red set up a decent RP to seize an opportunity. The Rocket Flare is not going to spot him. So this could be deceptive. I mean, Mage is going to be the advantage. He jumps up on Amber. Amber not getting a chance to use the flick. The Global Silence is there. Weeping with the cause trying to bring down Zark, who is active focusing. He's running after the Necroforce while Mage manages to pick off the Nag. Accurate chasing down the Necroforce, chasing down the Night Stalker. Will get Itachi God and Mage coming back for round two. He's focusing the Spectre. They got the Reaper side. They'll get the kill. Weepy solves Manly Tickle. And now that he's got in the Ice Path, they can go for a little bit more. Mage, unfortunately, low on mana. Still has the Aegis, could go back for the tier 3, but he says I'll have the clock one first. Jumps right on top of him, VP barely survives thanks to Punk and his 4 staff. Punk might just be able to take away the Aegis, and yes he does. That looks like it was going to be a massive team fight victory coming out for Mage and his boys, but Mage jumps in on the back lines, he does bring down the Pugna first, so he completely deletes the Pugna's useful, usefulness in the fight. Not so much as a nether ward dropped over there. There was a ward somewhere behind, but he came back and cleaned it up shortly after. With the death of the Pugna, he then focused his efforts towards the clockwork, uh, sorry, towards the centre, who was pushed behind by the clockwork cogs in a compromising position. I... 
also somewhat understand how Akrid is feeling about this. He wants to haunt in a little late. But I think this haunting to cancel a couple of blink daggers is going to provide a lot in terms of uh, the inside for but the Akshas. What you've got to remember is that was the fight without the RP committed at all. If an RP connects in the middle of that fight, even on two heroes, Sven comes in and carves them up in a matter of seconds and that fight goes horribly wrong for the side of Yakshas. They didn't lose their tier 3, which is uh, really a godsend right now for them. And Appa, I feel like his items are just getting more and more useless by the second man. He's gone for the Lincoln Sphere after this uh, pick up on the Blink Dagger. I hope to see him go for the Ag soon enough. Yeah, I'd like to see the Ag. got to allow him to stay alive. Um, he won't be dying to the Sven again in that sort of fashion. It's going to take multiple heroes to Too focus it. But he does need that Ag set though. Acted meanwhile, the skill of the man for standing, for making slow and steady progress towards it. The, my issue with the Pugna going for these utility and defensive items with the Blink and the Lincoln Sphere is that he's the second highest farmed hero in the game and he's just having no impact whatsoever in these fights. Yeah. Sure, the Sven can no longer jump him and take him down by himself, but I mean, he's still susceptible to an RP. And if he caught, gets caught in that RP, Sven's gonna happily carve him up. I mean, I, I agree. And I'd also like to see the is about to flounder. I don't know, they shouldn't be giving it up. Dyer's they should given up on the other mage because they've, they've got global, the they've got hard. I don't know what they will be waiting for over there. But yeah, so they gone. And slowly, Yaksha is just losing vital map control here. Sven me not. Heading towards that. Now he's got Pashu. That's a neat little solo kill coming up from VP with the one shot. Pashu is food at this point, but... Yeah, it, it's not about the Jakiro dying, it's about the fact that they're giving up too many tier 2s in my opinion. I'm also worried about uh, the Spectre now because Sven's gone for the Bloodthorn, which means that he's more than happy to just jump in and act by himself. The Radiant Evasion will no longer play much of a factor if you can tag him with the Bloodthorn uh, debuff. Uh, this is not a good trade for the Archers. They're Radiant giving up a tier 2 and they're hoping the to get another. Appa needs to be there Dyer's with the Nether Ward. Tower is drowning. Sending an illusion in, then not falling for this bait. Ah, no way they're going to fall for this. Rocket Flare VP, could he get the fight started? First of the country he has the whole oh, shot, the front block. Excuse me, by the own illusion, by Pogna blocking his own teammate. The haunt is there, hook shot on the Zuck, they've caught him in the cogs. There's Apple with the nether ward. Can they bring down the macro? Oh, the the oh, 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 macro is there, the RP onto the spectacular oh, 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 He rips him a new one, he moves on a collide, he, he brings down, down the center, and VP is all by himself. Can Appa keep him alive, the decrypt will buy him some time, but Red is there with the skewer. Red gets hurt by the dogs and Jimmy just turns around and gets a kill. It's made by himself, he's got Itachi, he's got nearby, but he's up against the Pugna and his silencer. Waj is going to back off. No hesitation there by Red. He sees the Spectre, he RPs the Spectre and calls for backup from Mage, who most, I mean, he obliges. He comes in and destroys the Spectre in a matter of seconds and then proceeds to dominate. There was a slight misplay there. He denied one of his creeps instead of hitting a creep, which would have been the cleave damage needed to kill down the Clockwork. But uh, nonetheless, it was just a little bit of a delay, which does end up with Mage taking a successful team fight. It ends up being a 3 for 3 trade. But the fact that the Spectre dies and the Sven doesn't still puts the uh, tables in favour of uh, yeah of the marksman. marksman yeah yeah well, Mage he's not done farming just yet his blood torn now complete as he's pretty much hitting uh, that maximum farm point is he going to swap out that Mask of Madness for the Satanic are we going to see a Moonshot first just a few options that he has on his hands right now. Spectre, meanwhile, she's kind of falling off here. Yeah. I, I never thought I'd say this, but the Spectre's falling off. I mean, more than falling off, it's hard for the Spectre to keep up with uh, Sven, who has empower upon him. Smoke coming up from the Marksman, they're just waiting across the mid lane. You expect someone to come and leave, and Funk is cautious about this, not moving forward. Instead, they're just going to move towards the Spectre, acted all by himself, without haunt, with a fair bit of underlapping gold, but they see Funk, they move from Funk, let's go with the Spectre. Pops the plane mail, Appa nowhere in sight, and he's not going to keep him alive. While Mage jumps onto the back line, eliminates Funk. How does that work? Kanaya committed a BKB but not the God Strength, so they could use that to break some buildings instead. There's no haunt for 14 seconds. Funk Dyer's has a buyback coming from the side, attack. but they're just going for this. They're going for the middle tier 2 tower. Middle tower just got I mean, the bottom tower is under attack. 
Dyer's middle tower is under pressure. Dyer's structures are yeah, more than that. The John with the big shot, they're trying to focus the nine shot, the, and with the one piece, they bring him down. He is going to run for it, attempting this one to be so Spectre, but they managed to bring down the Sven and they should be able to bring down the Jupino. In fact, hell, no, yeah, he is a, he is a man of the hour. That was way too close. VP almost, uh, you know, missing that kill on the Jupino. But what was so crucial was VP jumping in there after the RP came down. Uh, jumping in and stopping the Sven from getting those auto attacks off. That really was the tight turner there because the Spectre ended up dropping in that fight. Without the Spectre and a Sven still roaming free, that he could have destroyed them. And that's four down on the side of the Indian. It cost them one buyback on the clockwork in that last fight. It's a death on the Spectre for 46 <coughs> seconds. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. But with that, one will have to die. He's got his eyes. He can light break. Radiance Middle Tower can't handle his damage. He's got the way out. He's playing the RP. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Radiant's middle tower, tower has fallen. Is the silver edge really the best choice? Excuse me, the But what is he doing? But I think the silver edge at this point on the side of the lot of gold. Marksman uh, may not be the best choice either. Round. Even though it's good with the Spectre, I think uh, you're now going to need to control that clockwork and the Pope that will fight. If you can take out the Netherworld and the Pope's on your wave, you can do a lot more in this fight. But what did do a lot of work in this game? We saw a lot of people in that fight time and again. Funk, he actually called out Let's Go Roshan on the main stage. And he died to go back to the Pope and popping the smoke and going on the hunt. So even this guy, you can see them drawing arrows on this top lane, they want to push that lane down. But already you can see Zark pushing out the middle lane. Tachi got his move. Radiant's top tower is on the rocks. They're trying to bring down Radiant's top tower. The best part is if you pick up silence, this is such bad news for that. Yeah, for Yacht Shells, honestly. I mean, their cooldowns, they're down for about 100 seconds without their cooldowns. They're pretty good, they're pretty good, they're pretty good. Not to mention the fact that Magnus has respawned with the RP available. They could just go and take a fight right away, and you know that that's what they want to do. They're moving here to go. Maze, I don't think they're going to have a bunch of people. 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 It's going to be a big one. I think it's missing 200 gold for completed agony. I think it's going to be so much. The vision advantage will play a major role up against that clockwork. He's time and again hooking in from a position of uh, from the vantage point for that, for that matter. Apple. I mean, it's the possibly the primary enemy, source of damage so versus the Sven once his BKB silence, wears off. Okay? Yeah. Uh, he can use that anytime, anywhere, and can silence all the heroes. BKB though comes wow. yeah. yeah. No gem on the side, no detection on the side of Marksman whatsoever. So great amount of power. Now he's walking close to a sentry ward though. They know which direction it came from as well. So he's doing a very sandy but mage. He picks up an arcade and pops that gun. Efficiency even in the pit. And now he's in the pit. No hook shot shenanigans. They got a go skew on him back. He tries to throw it and his force got cancelled. He's locked himself to his death. He's dead in the middle. That is even better. He's not going to be around the Aegis claim by Mage. The kill claim by Mage. And now clock's down to 30 seconds. And Necro post the trees. And don't forget, this was Mage using the buff from the RP. He's going to come back quicker as well. 30 seconds and he has it. 
I mean, the Kakushi is such a key component of the team, but this is the hard ass the Yakshas to defend. Uh, I'm actually going to drop down buyback status because if they don't have any, Dyer's they end up using one is pushing back the Sven for now. Something's working in their favor for the time being. The Chief Fifth will be dead. Uh, but trying to uh, slow down the push with his Nether. Yeah, it's out of mana. He doesn't have the RP available. Yeah, he just spots the Nether. He's going to go off with 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 the Nether. Soul Bones from the Blast Master. He's going to go off with the Nether. He's going to go off with the Nether. He's going to go off with the Nether. Shoot, but he's isolated himself. He's coming too deep. He might save his life here, but he bring down the Jukiro first. Then looking to initiate once more. Kalai doesn't mana for the boot stomp. The halberd wasn't there last time. Oh, the 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 calls from Niki catching his arch guard inside. The night stalker will fall, and this the boot stomp is too deep to bring down the nature force. And indeed, they will both red. As well as the Sven make a run for it, and Yaksha somehow hold on. I think that questionable was stuff coming out from. Uh, it was a buyback on the Pagna. It was questionable stuff coming out from the marksman when the Sven bailed alongside that Red Magnus. They chose to continue going forward. Red just never Dyer uses RP. We have yet to enemy. see an impact for RP coming out. Boom, Did he not have mana? He didn't have mana, but he had a mango that was just sitting in his backpack. I think oh, okay. He hasn't used it for a long time now. He could have definitely gone in there and popped an RP. He's looking for it now, I think. But it's, it's at a pretty bad time. Yeah, I mean, the tier 3 is falling fast. The next one might have to buy oh, back. Oh, Mage. What did Controlled I Controlled by Pounce. Punk with an observer on the high ground. Cancels Mage's blink dagger as he pops a god strength and prepares to jump in. Punk alerts his teammates Radiant of what's going on. And that turns into a fizzled defense. Could them. save them. They Any could go back. They, they have... Global. They're just waiting for the Godstrand to wear off here. Yeah. yeah. They, they're keeping time. I'm hearing all of this on the stage. They're keeping time. Beautiful stuff coming up from the Yakshas. You're going to see slowly the glyph is there. But the Netherblast still does a fair bit. I mean, back to the... I think we'll understand that work. Sometimes it feels like... Yeah. The Albert was just going over and gets into a back to region without... They're, they're backdooring you left, right, and center. Kalang goes in. Who's Tom Stampede? Once you're away, he's got the double edge stopping, popping red with the RP. One takes it, doesn't use it, and the global silence is there. Mage goes in. He's been forced to pop his BKB. He's running after half a half a silence. He can't use the D grip. BP caught in battle. He's got the blade mail, and Mage is oh, running right back. Oh, the high power. Well, that would have been the ideal hoop stop for them. And Kalang might end up going down. Half a with the light red. There's the RP from there. Catches to Where's the follow up? Where's Mage when you need it? He's being kited somewhat. VP with the dogs. Controlling mage, they brought down the Sven. They're taking away his ages and Appa. He's healing up the clockwork. They could kite around the Sven some more. Mage, his blink cancelled thanks to the pushback by the cogs. He blinks for the east, but VP's gone west. And eventually, this should be a dead clockwork. <laughs> they lose the tier 3 though. That's, That's the first tier 3 tower of the game that goes down and it goes in favour of the Yakshas. They're doing it against the odds. Honestly, they're just playing the better team fight. They're executing the draft a lot better than uh, the marksman right now. Getting that tier 3 tower now means that the shrines are vulnerable. Some fantastic stuff coming out from BP there. Time and again, cogging in multiple heroes, holding them in position. Sven just being kited to the max there. Yeah. I don't think I've seen this in a long time, but the Sven gets controlled by a measly four position clock. Beautiful stuff. BP is just playing out of his mind. And all of that because Punk started it off with a high ground ward into the cancelled initiation from the Sven. RPs from Red, completely underwhelming so far. Either they're coming out too late or they're not coming out at all. Yeah, I am smiling like a remains. child in Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. That was some phenomenal Dota coming out from the Yakshas. Fun to watch. They lost Tweepy, they lost Kalnaya. Kalnaya needs to be a little bit more careful, doesn't need to blink into the ice path. Just got to respect that spell. But yeah, I mean, Yakshas nearly, nearly. I, I could forgive him for that. Every now and then you get so happy looking yeah. at three heroes in the mix. Yeah, you you want to just jump in and, and, jump make in and like control them, but. Anyway. The shrines now exposed, none taken apart just yet. Both shrines still standing. And let's have a look at the spectre. He's picked up that uh, mantis alloy earlier on, and he's also got himself 4.5k gold in the banks. So. I have no idea. What do you think of those? I, 
probably expect him to go for the abyssal or the heart here. One of those can't take it. I'll take that. I'd like to see the abyssal actually. I don't know how many thousand. That's additional control versus the Sven. You could build armor. You could build evasion. Sven is maxing out as well though. He finished up that satanic. He hits like an absolute truck. The problem is he's off the road. Okay, I'm gonna say you're stuck. Bottom. Bashu, he's out here by himself. He's gonna get spotted. He will fall the wall. So, he'll be okay for now. Mage is moving top there. They're going without Bashu on this top lane. They need the punk. Sounds like a bad idea. Oh, he's spotted the Kuro. Bashu's gonna be dead for this fight. And now they can beat him back to defend 4 versus 5. The Haunt, is it available? He does have it if he wants to pop it. They're gonna pop him. He walk, try and make a run for it. But now we see the Haunt. They can actually catch up to them. Control that look for the hookshot from VP and it's managed to find Zark. Zark can BKB and DP out. And there's not much that the Arches can do. Oh, sure they they're getting for me. Mage just comes in, pops the Arches, excuses the Blood Thorn and illuminates for EP. He popped his BKB as well. Appa's linkage here triggered. They could go back in for now. Dukala goes in. Who's top on his Zark? The double edge is there. The life drain upon the Sven, cancelling his blink. They move on for second. The Halbert controls the Sven. Sven can't do much than running him down. The Spectral Dagger upon him. I, I have a, I have a happy tear falling from my eye right now. I mean, this was just some unbelievable stuff coming out from Yagi Gun. Top tier movement and top tier decision Going into the chase, knowing that they messed up in the initiation, knowing that they were fighting without the chicken in the entire fight, knowing that the horn would end up setting up for the kill on the Necrophos. I love what we did. He knew that there was a good game he could be off to the Necrophos. He chose not to use his hookshot until it was absolutely necessary. In on him. He had the blade mail online to do a little bit of damage in return. Yeah, now they're going in. On mage. Akrit feels rather confident uh, over here. He's got Appa nearby. Oh, mage. Uh, Albert no. controlled me. again. Yeah. Decrepify on Akrit and the force yeah. stuff to get him out. This is just, they're really playing with their food right now. Now that's 6.4k gold on Akrit. He's chosen to finish up the heart. Okay. Let's. It's gonna allow him to just stay alive longer and make sure he's for the enemy supports as well. He's got the haunt available once again though if they want to try and fight. Was that a refresher orb that he picked up by any chance? No, I no. don't think so. There was no refresher shard. I mean, it's only been I mean, the second shard, Roshan. Yeah. The third Roshan hasn't taken place just yet. Well, Sven, that buyback does hurt his economy a bit, but fortunately for him, he's basically capped out. The moon shard, the only thing he's missing at the moment. You need those RPs. I have some form of impact. Right now, yeah, this is it's it's the only thing that's missing in their, in their uh, arsenal right now. If they get a good RP off, you know that this man is going to back it up for the most part. I honestly don't mind that. Even anything you need to get that. Oh, BP with a hook shot, they've got Pashu, they're old spread, the dragon will be kicked around, the haunt is there, casting a blink, he's got the skewer, he pulls back BP, but BP just man fighting the Magnus, brings him down with a little bit of assistance from Akrid. This should be the end of the game, and, to be and honest. Pashu's also done for. This really should be the end of the game, there's I mean, no they're Magnus to, for they're a minute. Go Roshan. Their Roshan is going to be painful, it's also wise. Um, they're in a bit of a conundrum. You eliminate the Magnus, do we Roshan or do we go high ground? I guess they're not too confident about whether or not he has the buyback. Yeah. They're just gonna go. Who expects a Magnus to hold on to a BKB recipe instead of a buyback? That's just. I don't know. It's so crucial He's that gonna he has. gonna respawn, but I don't think the marksman can contest. Yeah. They can because I don't Yeah, they can't contest. Yeah, Best case, Akrit and his boys just wait another 70 seconds. Come in with an Aegis Trees and uh, a refresher shard as well on Punk. Two horns or two global silences? I what think do you want to go to global silences. I think two horns, man. I don't know. I, I'm just leaning in that direction for now. Imagine the spectre just haunting it, jumping left, right, and center, and making life difficult for everyone. 
Yeah, that could have. No, they gave it over to uh, Punk. I think. Okay, they gave it over to Punk. No, not Punk. Who's holding on to it? Is it VP? It's Kalnayak. Why? Two stampedes. Two Aghanim Scepter stampedes. Why oh. the hell not? <laughs> Damage reduction. It's yeah. going to help a lot. Radiant are scanning for enemies. Yeah, I missed that Aghanim Scepter. Radiant's up, uh, bottom shrine is under attack. attack. Okay, so this is going to push uh, slowly but surely from uh, two lanes at once. Seems to be the plan. Radiant's Apple's bottom out shrine has fallen. Active is doing his own thing. Uh, Splish got splash. a double damage rune, 2.4k gold. I'm going to move towards the shrines. Smaller structures to just wet their appetite. Eight seconds in the haunt of Dark Online, so why the hell not? But there's a double damage rune on Acrid. It's going to last only a little while longer, so it's unlikely to get Mage is doing what he can to split push off. His best is not enough at um, this point. So, what's the ideal play or hope here for the master? Like the all the RP. Man. They've got a RP. VT just goes in and the global science is going to follow through. Now, Red is never going to get the chance with the haunt upon him. Red has to stop the fight before VT does this. They've taken out Pashu. Itachi got sent back to base. He has vision of the fountain and he's going to enjoy that extra night vision while his barracks are under siege. Mage, nowhere nearby. He's gonna come soon enough. Kalan still has a refresher card. VP doesn't have the hook shot. Actress on from Gul'dan. They can move towards the mid lane. 50 seconds without a Jakiro. It's not due to the marksman, but it's still a man. I think it goes in lane to on him. Then I'm not sure whether the was an enemy force stopping him aggressively. But that was Red you. That was his own force stop. Yeah, that was kind of compelled. Kalna, if you two stomp, pops the stampede. Using the refresh card. The life drain is there. They've eliminated Zaki. RP. I mean, it's just decoration at this point. Kalna controls Red. Kalnaya cherishing his dominance over the enemy offlaner. Ultimately goes down to the Reaper side. Apple's here, another blast. Itachi God walks in his life drain from him. Mage with the empower upon him, trying to make a man pop the BKB. Moves on towards the Pugna. Pugna might just end up going down and indeed he will. Pump with a glimmer game, can't survive. Apple's being dropped down, suddenly he's brought down. But look at this. Action, he's going for the third lane of battle here. And the marksman. I don't know how they find their way back. They're going to get VP, but VP has to cheese. Does has the four stop? No gets way. Away. And Nitachi God can't really chase. You gotta be kidding me. VP is just playing out of his mind. VP and Kalnaik both just playing some fantastic Dota in that last team yeah. fight. That hoop stop from Kalnaik. It it was a treat to watch. I mean, Magnus I, could take a page out of his playbook. Absolutely, right? the hoop stop has had higher impact than these up. And honestly, this time there was no excuse for the Magnus either because the the haunt wasn't online for the second fight. Yeah. He should have been able to go in and get a good RP up. This is. It's not the way the Magnus should be playing this late in the game. There's way too much on his shoulders for him to be uh, choking right now. Mm -hmm. But they still sort of hold on. I mean, they lost two lanes of barracks. The third still stands. Sven, he's alright at dealing with uh, multiple waves of super creeps pushing into the middle and the bottom lanes. However, with every passing team fight that Akrid survives, he's going to come back stronger. Now he's got 6.4k gold, which I can only hope is going to be converted into an Abyssal Blade. Yeah, I'd really like to see an Abyssal Blade pick up from Akrid. He's also got uh, the haunt back online, so maybe you try and push once more. Abyssal, jump on top of the Sven, control him, keep him busy while your team does the rest. And yeah, it's going to be the Abyssal man. He upgrades that man. We've also got a Scythe of Vice on the Pugna. Mm -hmm. That's uh, more control coming out in the face of what should be for the Necrophos. Necrophos's BKB is down to 5 seconds now, so Zark, all he's really doing is coming in at the tail end and using the Reaper side to finish off that Centaur, but. Radiant it's not enough. It, I mean, the centaur died after using a refresher shard, two ults, and two hoof stomps. Yeah. Kalnaik has more than done his job. Three man hoof stomp, on point. The Setting only up. way that uh, the Yakshas could have an easier time is if they chose to pick up things like the Lotus Orb this game. I'd like to see the Lotus Orb coming Radiant's out on the Clockworks next. Yes. So, yeah. What's the Clockwork going for? Um, Boom, there it goes. Is that the that he stood up? Um, yeah, that's the Nullifier. Radiant's okay. top shrine has fallen. So it's gonna be nice versus... Look at what Punk's picked up, by the way. In the dead of the night, he's just sneaking <laughs> that money into his pocket. Then he buys out a full refresher of <laughs> I don't even know where he got this money from. <laughs> Punk plays his own game and he has the best time in the world playing it. I don't see anyone who enjoys himself quite as much as Punk here on set. Alright, here comes the next push. It is. Let's hope that has more than enough information to land a good RP. And Mage. Oh, so the thing is that Gotcha can get this from VP 